Hi, this is Scott Garibay, and today we're going to talk about Duns and Dragons, and we're going to talk about my Duns and Dragons uh, Arbor Adventures, and we're in session seven. And specifically today, we're talking about um, the Sun Elf Rogue Assassin Dulos uh, traveling with his allies, uh, Dragonborn Grax and Half Elf, uh, Dragonborn Fighter Grax and Half Elf. Ranger Parak, uh, and they are le uh, and um, Dulos's brother Farrowin, and they are traveling from Candlekeep up uh, up to Phandalin. All right, uh, actually, they're not even traveling. No, that's not correct. They're not traveling to Phandalin. They are specifically in ser in search of a noble hero um, who is going to help with this plan that Vornway put into place. Right. So they're looking for a noble hero who is very willing to sacrifice heavily, right? And so, and so there's a bit of wander, right? Because you know, if when you need something that specific, you're not a hundred percent sure where you'll where you'll find it, where you will find it, right? So at this point, they've met up with the Soulbinders. The Soulbinders is this evil adventure part, evil adventuring party. And uh, they are serving as, and one of their, one of the Soulbinders, Elon, is serve, and the Soulbinders, by the way, are an MCDM uh, villain group that comes specifically out of Flea Mortals, okay? So, and it's quite excellent. I was very impressed with that, what I found in Flea Mortals. It, it really is worthy of the, the Dungeon Dragons name as far as canon. I'm quite impressed with what Matt Colville was able to produce. And I'm very glad that, you know, MCDM content is now uh, D and D canon. That's, that's awesome. So, um, and it, it takes a competitor off the board for, for Dungeons and Dragons. I don't think Matt Colville really, you know, functions as a competitor for Dungeons and Dragons exactly the same way that making content for Dungeons and Dragons has made sure that critical role really doesn't serve as a competitor for Dungeons and Dragons, which is pretty fascinating. So, uh, the soul binders have this privateer commander, right? And this, uh, and uh, and Elon is serving as a privateer commander for the Fandolin Dwarven miners. And so, Elon is uh, is taking the is moving the Soulbinders up the Sword Coast from the south to the north, right? From all the way from Candle Candlekeep, past Baldur's Gate, past Waterdeep, uh, and then up to Fandolin. And Fandolin is right before ne you hit Neverwinter, all on the Sword Coast, right? Um, which is the left coast of Faerun, right? And then the Moonshay Isles are in the um, are in the water. Now, one of the reasons why I talk about that is one of the things that this this campaign. So I'm running Crown and Skull Rules, but it's Dungeons and Dragons lore, and I am learning a lot about um, about Faerun. Uh, one of the things I'm doing is I'm using the high resolution, uh, and this is you can get it right on, you can get it right on. Um, on D and D Beyond, there is a ton of amazing content on D and D Beyond uh, that you can get just with with a subscription. Actually, not even a subscription. You could get with your account. All you need is an account. So D and D Beyond is amazing. There's a ton of amazing stuff on there. If you have a subscription, there's a ton of amazing stuff on there. Uh, I mean, a ton of amazing stuff. If you just have an account, right? So at this point. Um, they're traveling with this private, with Elon serving as a privateer commander. And this was modeled after privateer, privateers in the Navy, right? So hundreds of years ago, um, I think they actually did this when the U.S., for the U.S. Revolution, there were all these pirates and basically governments would just come along and be like, we're in a war. You're no longer a pirate, you're a privateer, right? So this villain, um, uh, this villain group, it, what they're really doing is, um, they're, they're moving up the coast and they're gathering an army to, uh, to fight for uh, Stone Lord Thera, who is the daughter of Forge Lord in H Mount Hotenau, right? Uh, and that's dangerous because if the dwarves really uh, lose badly, this could escalate to a war between dwarves and humans across all of Faerun, which And that's not good. That's very, very bad. Right, like, because that would be a lot of deaths. So at this point, um, the uh, Dolos is there, and Dolos is um, 
and Delos, they come to a they come to a village, right? And Elon gives the same speech. Like in the morning, you guys are going to uh, donate to us, right? And it's very clear that this uh, this organiz that this group of people are in a lot of trouble. And in the morning, people are probably going to die. Or there's going to be a lot of suffering and woe, right? And so Dolos with his entire crew is like, oh man, if we're here in the morning, this turns into a huge battle, right? And so they just leave in the middle of the night, literally leave this uh, this village to their own. Um, and, you know, so Dolos is a hero, question mark, right? And sometimes it's hard to tell, right? He's like, if this battle doesn't exactly, uh, you know, if, if it's not threatening me and mine, I don't know if I want a hero today, which is really fascinating, really fascinating. So they move on and allow, and just allow this, uh, and we don't, you know, and all, all, it's off screen. We don't know what happens to that village in the morning. I can tell you it probably wasn't good, right? Um, and at this point, uh, Dolos and his crew continue on to find their noble champion, their noble hero, right? And uh, that's, that's what I'm covering today for... Um, Season 1, Episode 7 of Arbor Adventures. In my humble opinion, everything you just... Every word you just heard is my humble opinion. The important part is when I get to hear your humble opinion when you get in the comments and send your traffic. Please consider like subscribing and have a fetch millennium.